Hey everyone, my name is Jason. I'm a solo game developer living in Sweden and I'm working on my little game. We'll see how it goes, folks. And today we're going to be talking about vending machines because my game is a top-down 2D pixel art game made in the Godot engine and it is based in a city. Uh, it is mostly narrative and so vending machines are important because what's a city without vending machines? Am I right, folks? So let's take a look at these vending machines so far. So if I run up here, we can see a bunch of vending machines. Really cool, okay? So let's interact with one of them. We can see here that there are some drinks. We can see that there are buttons. Buttons, in, we can navigate these with the keyboard and mouse. You can also work the control, controller as well. Um, now I can try and buy stuff. I'm poor right now, I can't afford anything. But if I cheat, um, then I can buy stuff. So buy a blue drink, a red drink, uh, a light tea, and we won't buy the, the, the strong tea here. Forget it, okay? Let's go check my inventory. We can see we've got a blue drink, red drink, and a light tea. We don't have a strong tea. Let's check this vending machine here. we got a blue one, so we have a var variation. Pretty cool, pretty cool. Whoa, okay, this one's 999 yen, or credits, or whatever the currency's gonna be, who knows? Um, but here, uh, that that's highway robbery. We're not, we're not messing with that, but we'll buy a strong tea instead. Uh, buy more, and then we'll run out of money eventually. And then I can't buy anymore. So here we are. We got ten. We got ten strong teas. Really cool. All right. So vending machine seems to be working. Now some things to note, real quick, um, is this has a brick background, as we can see. Uh, we got six buttons on this vending machine. The UI is is thinner, as the machine is thinner than the red one, right? It's thinner than this this red UI. Um, this has a maroon background on it, so there's a different background there as well different number of drinks. Cool. Well, notice that there's also reflections on the, the glass pane here. That's pretty interesting. Okay. And this has a reflection too. So this weird thingy here. Right? So they've all got like different reflections. This has the same reflection. This has a different reflection. Okay. So interesting. Those are the vending machines. Okay. So I think uh, the thing that I want to talk about most is that, um, you know, that's the demo. You see how they work. That's cool. Um, and the thing that I want to talk about most is that one of the important things for me when making these vending machines was that I wanted to make sure that the vending machines was um, easy to set up and configure, right? So you saw all those different variables there, what drinks are in it. Um, what price the drinks are, what backgrounds there are, what's the deal with reflections. I wanted to make sure all of this was an easy to work with workflow um, to make life simple for me, right? And I think the best way to demonstrate this is, uh, demonstrate the result of that is to just work on one myself right now. So if we're gonna place one down, let's say we're gonna place it. Um, so we'll just put this one in the, in the middle of the road. That makes sense. Um, and then we'll add some snacks. I, I know that this one supports up to eight snacks. So let's say we make eight. Um, and then I put some drinks in. So, uh, drink, blue, we'll put a red in, and then we'll do another blue and red maybe. And then like, we'll do a light tea. We'll leave a space maybe. And then we'll do like, whoop. And then we'll leave a space, let's do that. And then let's make one of these really expensive. So let's just make the first one. Let's make the second one, 555, oh boy. And the first one is gonna be, we'll leave it the same. So we'll do negative one. And I don't have to fill in the other eight if I don't want to, if I know they're all gonna be the same. If if I wanted to make one of the later ones uh, a higher pr price, then I would have to add all eight in here, set the corresponding one to the price, fill in negative ones for the ones that I didn't want it to be, and then we're big chilling. I might change this negative one thing to like Z, just to be zero, because I don't think I want anything to be zero. And that way the process of adding these is gonna be easier, right? Cause I don't have to go through here and be like, negative one, negative one, negative one. So like that's an improvement that I might do in the future. I'll see if I rub up against it more or not. Uh, and then we could also choose a background. Let's maybe do the um, maroon background. So that's this one. So we can override a background. They all come with default background. So I don't have to do it if I don't want to, but depending on the location, I can override the background and I can also override the reflection as well, but I'm not gonna do that for now. All right, so let's take a look at that. Okay, game is up, let's go. Check this out. Let's see here. We have a reflection, we got the maroon background. We have a blue drink, red drink, blue drink, red drink. The second one is really expensive. The rest are normal priced. Um, 
yeah, we got the, the drinks missing and we're set up. That's how easy it is to set up a vending machine. It's uh, no big deal, right? Super easy. Uh, yeah, it's really nice. And that's pretty much it when it comes to these vending machines. But there is one part that I want to talk about more, and that is the reflection aspect. And the reason that I created these reflections in the first place, the motivation, two reasons. The first one is to help convey glass panes. There's more I can be doing and should be doing and will be doing to do that. Um, but regardless, I think having this sort of like reflect city reflection could be a good touch as well. Um, so that's the first reason. But the other reason is that I think that it's a great little touch to help convey a space, a city space, right? That like, if you have these reflections behind you, it sort of suggests that there's city and things behind you. And I think that that's kind of really interesting. Um, especially in a 2D game like this, where you can't turn the camera around to see what's behind you. So that's basically what I'm uh, trying to achieve here with these reflections. But now with that in mind, one thing that I wanted though, is that I didn't want to have to then go and manually set a reflection for every vending machine, because that would be very tedious and annoying. To me, I thought it would just be nicer if there was just some random way for the reflections just to kick off and um, are just determined basically. and. That's basically sort of what, what happens here. So if I if I go to this here, initially what I had was I had an array of different reflections and every time you would close this and open it, um, it would have a different reflection, which is interesting. Um, but this is not a quantum vending machine. Okay, we're not like teleporting around the place and you know the world behind me is shifting, who knows, right? It, it, a vending machine in a specific location should have the same reflection every time you open it. it, it the, the city isn't shifting in real time. It doesn't make sense. So uh, what I went with instead was an approach where I take the X and Y position of the vending machine, I add them together and I use that value to select a reflection uh, texture from an array, basically, of re reflection textures. Uh, and then I just use that. And that way, a, a vending machine in its position will always have the same reflection. But that means that even if I move it like one to the right, uh, that means that uh, I'll get a different reflection. And this is, I don't remember what the reflection was before, but this is a different reflection to that. Uh, I'm pretty sure. I think it might have been the one with the squiggly thing on the right before. But that's how I select the reflection textures uh, right now. I, I'm not sure how I want to handle it because, you know, what if you have three that are right next to each other? Should they have three different reflection? Textures? Probably not, right? But then I have the ability to override a reflection if I want. The thing that I went for here, the, the reason I like this approach that I've gone with, is that I don't have to think about the reflection if I don't want to. I can if I want to. And so that is a nice setup, in my opinion. The other thing to consider with these reflections, though, uh, and this is what the reflections look like right now. Uh, this is one of them, this is another one, and this is another one, right? now. They're blue right now. I don't know if they're going to stay blue. Um, we're going to have to see how the situation kind of develops. But um, basically, this is what they look like. And initially, the reason they're this shape was because they were made to fit in the red uh, vending machine UI. And that fits perfectly in here. Um, but then that doesn't work so well in this where um, let's let's see if I turn off the shader that does all this. If I disable a shader, this is what it would look like. It spills over the edge, right? Um, so what I would probably end up doing in the future is making a reflection texture that's like really wide and really large that can handle ven vending machines that could potentially even fill up the entire screen, right? Uh, and then what I do now is I use a, a mask to select portions of the reflection texture and only show it on those portions, right? So a couple things to consider is, yeah, sure, of course this goes outside the edge, that's no good, right? But another thing to keep in mind is if I, if I put this back to this state, um, is it also goes over the top of these buttons when it shouldn't, because my the way I envision this is that the ref reflection should only be over the glass, which is these two panes, right? But you can see that it's over the top of this button here. And if we look here, I think as you can see it's happening here too. And here as well, right? And it shouldn't do that. Instead, that, that center part, you can even see that it's making an effect here. That center part just shouldn't be 
maybe just shouldn't even be um, considered. So what I use instead now is a reflection uh, mask, or I just use a mask for the reflection textures. And that looks like this. And it's like, there's black parts and there's white parts, right? And what we're saying is the white parts allow through the reflection texture and the black parts hide the um, reflection texture. And that's basically what we do. So if I enable this last line, which does that bit, then we see that these buttons are no longer covered by the reflection vector. Um, and this blue one here no longer has a reflection vector spilling out. What this does mean is that I do need to make a custom mask for every variation of vetting machine or any variation of any machine that has different proportions uh, so that they select from the reflection mask correctly. But that's not too bad. That's just a, you know, a simple black and white image like this, right? Per, per vetting machine variation. That's not a big deal. Um, because the, the issue we would have been running up with before if I were to do um, custom reflections for every variation of vetting machine, if I had 10 variations uh, of reflections, and 10 variations of vetting machines, that's 100 images. We're not doing that, okay? So now we just have 10 images and then one mask per um, per variation of vetting machine. And that is a much nicer solution in my opinion. Okay, so that's pretty much it. I think I've covered everything that I wanted to cover. Thank you so much for watching. If you found this interesting, do give it a like. If you do like these videos, if you wish to support me, these videos, the game that I'm making, the live streams that I do over at twitch.tv slash gemmels on Saturdays, if you want to support me in any way, shape or form, you can do that by uh, subscribing, becoming a member uh, on you here on YouTube, becoming a patron over on Patreon or becoming a Twitch sub over on Twitch. And no matter which one of these you subscribe to, you get perks for it. Uh, it doesn't matter which, even if you are using Twitch, and I'm a poet, and I didn't even realize it. Okay. <laughs> Thanks, everyone, for watching the video. I hope you enjoyed it, and I will catch you all next time. Bye. I hate myself.